Hello, everyone. I'm honored and blessed to stand before you today and declare that I am a colon cancer survivor. And thank God for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, after being diagnosed in 2006, my sister had done an extensive research for oncologists for me and narrowed her search down to visit to NYU Cancer Center and Sloan Kettering. I can remember it like it was yesterday because it was February 28, 2006. These dates, they like stay in your mind. I don't know about any of you, but I, you, when you've gone through so much, like the dates are just like targeted in there and they just don't go away. And it was like three and a half, it was just like three and a half um, um, weeks after my first colon surgery. And we had an appointment with Dr. Teresa Ryan at NYU. And when I walked in, immediately I felt at ease from the concierge desk to the receptionist on the ninth floor. It was just a warm environment. After my visit with Dr. Um, Ryan, my family and I left, and needless to say, we never made it to the other appointment. I knew that NYU and Dr. Ryan was the place for me. Two days later, Dr. Ryan called with my blood work, and my CEAs were off the map. That's also tumor markers in case. I'm quite sure you guys all know that. And she immediately scheduled me for a PET scan and a CAT scan and an MRI. And I was like so nervous about MRIs because I never had one before. And you know, it's like a coffin type thing. And I was like, well, I don't know if I could do that. And did I have any medication to, to like calm me down? But I got through it. And it wasn't as bad as I thought. But I knew I had to take these tests in order if I wanted to survive. So I was a complete wreck. And the results revealed that my cancer had metastasized to the liver thereby going to stage four colon cancer. Dr. Ryan got on the case immediately. She started with me chemotherapy, and she also made an appointment for me to speak with Dr. Sp um, Spiros Hiotis, an amazing surgeon that was on the NYU staff at that time. And his job was my liver. Dr. Hiotis performed a successful surgery, liver surgery, in August of 2006. I trusted my doctors and I followed all the rules. I listened to their suggestion concerning my health. I knew that they had my health and my recovery first, whether it was you know, through clinical trials or something that was just newly approved. I was going to do everything I needed to do to survive. So therefore, I took Avastin, I took Herbotux, whatever, I, whatever you know, they suggested, and I thought that it was you know, something that I would think about doing, I did it. And you can see me now I'm here today. Um, I kept a positive attitude, and I think that's so important. And my motto was, I always said, I got to keep this thing moving. I got to keep it moving. I, I just got to keep it moving. And you know, so I just dealt with the side effects, the annoying side effects, the skin rashes, the darkening hands, the, needles, the, the, the needing to apply new skin on my splits at the bottom of my feet. But I was happily doing all this stuff because I wanted to, I wanted to make it. I wanted to, I wanted to get there. And I had a positive attitude while I was doing everything. And having to stay away from all those, from drinking or touching anything cold. And lastly, having to go home with a bottle attached to me every other week. That was chemotherapy. I did it with a smile on my face. And I was determined to live. One thing I know for sure is that you have to do what makes you feel happy. I love to dress and I like to look nice and I always like to, you know, just put on makeup and have my hair done. And, and, you know, every time I went to the cancer center, I'd be all dressed up and my mom would be with me and my husband would be with me. And they said, who's the patient? Is it her or who's, is it your mother or you? Because I never ever looked like I had, that, was, that works for me. And you have to do what works for you. It could be just wearing the most comfortable sweater that you ever had. It could be, um, listening to your music while you're taking your chemotherapy. It could, it could be um, just anything that just really makes you have reading a book or just meditating, whatever. But you have to do what it takes to get you to get through it. And you're going to make it. You, 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 you're you're going to make it. And I had cancer. Cancer did not have me. It did not have me. I had it. So the people around you are very important also. And you remember, they feel your pain and your suffering right along there with you. They really do. I mean, because sometimes I, I would be in pain, but I thought about, I was aware of my 
family, and I didn't want them to feel a little bit burdened, but sometimes you are in pain. You have to let that pain show also, because they're there for you, and they love you. And when I was diagnosed, my daughter was in middle school, and my son was attending a prep school in Connecticut. And it was hard for me to talk to him while I was going through the tough times, because he didn't really know how sick I really was. So I always sound happy when I got, got off the phone with him. I, I would always be, Hi, how are you? He said, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Even though I might have been in excruciating pain because I just didn't want them to know. My daughter was at home and so she saw up close and personal what I was actually going through. So for her, you know, I always had to keep, you know, stay strong. So I didn't want her to get her stressed out or, you know, or just down and out and fearful. And both of them just, just, just excelled because I didn't want them to, to, to waver in school or anything like that, but they, they, they kept it. They kept it strong. And I, and I think when you, have that, when you reflect that positive attitude, it, it, it goes out. It really does. So I kept that positive attitude each step of the way. I was determined to see my children graduate from college. I, was, I, just, I just said, I just, got, I just got to make it. I just got to see them, even though my, you know, I had, my odds were not that great. I, had a strong, I have a strong family support, and they were always there with me at each appointment, whether it was my husband or my mother or a sister or, or a friend. I don't think my mom ever missed an appointment. She was always there. So that's why they always thought it was her, not me, because she, I kind of look better than her. You know, this, that's, what, that's just the way it was. And that love and support, I think, was also a key to my recovery. You know, sometimes you, when you, um, you get news on those appointments, that are not always great. You know, I had sometimes that I would go out and say, well, this doesn't look good. We see something there. We see something here. And you know, it, it just didn't look great all the time. And often, as a patient, we tend to shut down. And we miss key information, because we're, our mind you know, is, all, is all bloggy and blurry. But having someone there to comfort you, or to pick you up, or to pick out something that you may have missed is truly important. And another point that I want to emphasize is that it is extremely important to try to avoid stress, if you can. Just try to avoid stress. In 2009, family deaths and personal issues, a lot of stressful things started to wear me down. I was feeling fine physically, but stress is something that, you know, you can, on the outward, you're okay, but on the inward, something could be, you know, going on. And I always kept my appointment, so I had an appointment with Dr. Ryan in 2009. And she noticed my CEA started to go up, going up again. And I was like, oh, no, I can't believe this. This is just not good. I don't know what's happening, but I feel great. I, I don't know what's going on. And so she sent me for another you know, round of tests. And then it was discovered that there was a metastasis to the ovary. And after surgery with Dr. Fishman, David Fishman, who's no longer here, but he was amazing, another amazing surgeon, along with the beloved Dr. Hiotis, they got me through it. And Dr. Ryan with chemotherapy all over again, I got through it. So that's three times chemotherapy, able to get through it each and every time. And it just was amazing. And now I'm, you know, I, you know again, I was, I'm cancer free as of, to now, as of now, I'm cancer free. And I said that to say this, you know, I don't know what the stress, you know, if the stress was the cause of that going to the ovary, but I believe in my heart that it may have something to do with it, but you know, you just don't know. So my, my whole thing is just try to stay away from stress as much as you can. It is so very important. And my experience at the Cancer Center has been absolutely wonderful. It's a place where I know someone on just about every floor. I love the, the center and I love the, the, my, from my chemotherapy nurses, the nurse practitioners, the phlebotomists, the technicians, the nutritionists, and most of all, all the amazing doctors. I find strength from my faith. And I have been a woman of faith for many years, and I know that having faith is one thing, but acting on faith is another. I was able to see my son graduate from college last year. I'm able to know that, I know I'm gonna be around for him to go to law school next year. My daughter is a junior in college, and I thank God for that. I just had my six month checkup and two weeks, two weeks ago and there's no evidence of disease and I'm set up with a nutritionist and I'm on my way to a healthier lifestyle. I believe that I was blessed to survive on purpose for a purpose. To share my story with you about cancer. I want to let people know that if I can make it, you can make it. 
and that it, as long as you keep it moving, you will make it. And I just want to thank you for your time and for this space and for the opportunity for me to tell my story.